Hello and welcome to episode 34 of Missile Industries Ford Falcon Krusty Wagon Project. Now, when we left off, my radiator was still not fixed. But uh, I dropped the radiator in last Friday, because I had the day off, and um, said to them, it worked great the first time, but when I properly heat cycled it, it sprung a leak. And they were mortified. And I pointed out where the leak had come from, and they had a close look and said, okay, we'll uh, sort that out for you. Instead of taking two weeks to come back to me, the radiator was fixed within two hours. So I went back and picked my radiator up, what felt like minutes later. And uh, while I was down in Slacks Creek picking up my radiator, I decided I would grab a box of BP5FS spark plugs to put into this motor because as I mentioned last episode they worked a treat to get my sedan running better so I'm going to give them a whirl in this old girl and see if that improves the way it runs so that's the plan I'll chuck the radiator back in the car change the plugs run the car hopefully no coolant leaks out and then after that I'm not sure what to do next after that, might back the car out of the driveway out of the shed, put it in the driveway and walk around it for a bit taking in what I've accomplished or I could compression test the motor I just don't know I do have a bunch of uh, suspension parts I need to put in this car at some point and I still haven't finished the exhaust system but I'll figure something out by the end of the episode I guess we'll all know so, for the time being, I'm going to for the, for the time being, I'm going to reinstall the fan shroud onto this radiator and make up a bracket that lets me take advantage of these two little lugs down here to locate the bottom of the fan shroud because I'm feeling more confident now that I can actually leave this radiator in the car for the long term. So I better make sure that fan shroud sits in here properly without going like this because we don't want that, because it's going to hit the engine in the future when the car is driven on the road hopefully in the not too distant future so that's where I'm at with that Okay, so I found some angle brackets from some uh, door door hardware lying around. So I'm going to deploy them onto the bottom of my radiator shroud and crudely screw them in with these uh, wood screws, I guess you call them. And that should hopefully retain this well enough for it not to flap into the motor while the car's going at motorway speeds. So this will be nice and simple, tap those in, screw them in and reinstall my radiator. There we go, crude but crude. That will do, that's actually more thorough than I was with the sedan because the sedan has it zippy tied top and bottom, whereas with this AU fan shroud I've actually gone more professional and secured it with screws and bolts top and bottom like a pro all right it's time to drop this radiator and fan shroud back in the car hopefully for the last time in a few months at least hopefully
job done. It's all plumbed back in. The wiring's all reattached. Hose clamps are on. I haven't put any corners in the engine yet. Because I'm not sure whether this car has a thermostat or not. And I should really take the thermostat housing off and have a look before I go putting corners in the car. Because the thermostat would be useful. Not 100% essential right now, but useful in the future. Great news, there is a thermostat in place, so I'll just button this all back up and pretend I never had a look. It is late in the afternoon on Saturday, the next day, and I've done nothing. But here we are, it's 4 o'clock, I'm going to crack on and put some spark plugs in this motor. I'll gap them down first, and while I'm doing that, I will put coolant into the car as best I can before the motor runs. Then I'll run the motor, and I'll get it up to temperature, Hopefully nothing leaks out. Ah. So let's see how we go. Okay, plugs are in, and now it's time to fire the car up, warm it up, get coolant into it, see how it sounds, and see if anything leaks out of it. No fluids come out, but I suspect I haven't really filled up the cooling system sufficiently because it took a long time to do anything. And then the bottom of the radiator got hot, but the top of the radiator did nothing, so I might have to put more corns in it and try again tomorrow. But for the time being, these spark plugs are eh, looking pretty black. So since the engine's warm, I might uh, chuck a compression tester on it and see what it has to say about whether this is a basket case or not. All the spark plugs are out, and as we can see by that, it's still running super rich. I have all the plugs out on both banks, and they are pretty sooty. Alright, I have my compression tester. I'll just test fit it to sit onto one and see if I've got the right thread adapter, and uh, we'll see how this goes. Fifty? One fifty-five? Well, that's one fifty-five psi on that cylinder. Yeah. That one's like one seventy. Yeah. That's pretty shit house. It's like 135. So cylinder 3 is pretty low. 135 isn't the end of the world for an old Cleveland. But uh, cylinder 4 tested at 175, so that's kind of weird. There's a high one and a low one. But we'll move on to the uh, second bank now. Fifty. Yeah. 
170. So we've got 150, 150, 130, 170, 150, 150, 170, 150. Does that sound right to you? Yeah. But after we've established that that one's the only piss poor one, we can wrap this up. So cylinder three was 130 and all the rest of them have been pretty good. I mean 150 is perfectly acceptable for a stock motor of this age. Pretty sure when I did my compression test on my Jag all those years ago it was 130 in each cylinder and I was like man that's shit but apparently that's normal. Alright this is the retest of cylinder three. Came out at 130 on the first test but we're just going to make sure we did it properly. Ready? Ready. Ah, so that's 155.2. Wow. That's pretty good. Summary time for episode 34 of Missile and Three's Crusty 351 Wagon Project. Now, that motor is in surprisingly good order. The compression ratio, or well, the compressions, are around 150, 155 psi, a couple of high ones, but it averages out to about 155, so in my estimation that's pretty good for an old motor like this. So chances are that motor's pretty sound, and um, I'm pretty happy with that, because obviously the motor was a great unknown when I bought the car, and for the price I paid for the car, I was just happy to have a, a motor to go with the car, so it's actually a pretty damn good bonus to have a 351 4MA Cleveland that has good compression and with the deal. I mean, I was just happy that it ran. I mean, the Carby is not the greatest choice, I must admit, and it rem I'm reminded now why I put that Carby in a, on the shelf and... Uh, stopped using it with the sedan because it gave me no end of headaches because I couldn't get the uh, I think it was the uh, idle control circuit to, to lean out at all no matter what I tried it was just crap and it just failed plugs so I bought a fresh new carby for that car that solved all my problems but it, this, that 750 holly in there is a hangover from my sedan project so it's probably not really appropriate and before I go much further with this car I'm going to need to get another carby for it. Probably a 600 VAC secondaries carby because I've had plenty of those in the past and they've never given me any dramas. And for a stock 351, that should be more than adequate for the fueling needs of the car. So, this does feel like incremental progress, but the radiator's in. Pretty sure it's not leaking anymore. It's holding coolant. No fluids are leaking out of the car. It's got fresh plugs and I should really crack on with uh, under dash issues because the car for some reason doesn't power up doesn't get any power to the coil, doesn't get any power to the dashboard and I'm going to need to fix that amongst the long list of other things the car needs so join me next time where we make incremental progress towards getting this car actually finished and actually out of the shed <laughs>